One of the most important things for us to understand as investors is free cash flow. What's going on with the company's free cash flow? Is it growing? How are they using it? And how is the market valuing the company based on their free cash flow? And all those questions are the exact reason I'm happy to release the free cash flow analysis spreadsheet. It's going to allow us to get in-depth insights into what's going on with the company's free cash flow. Now, let's take a step back for a moment. What is free cash flow and why is it important? Well, it's pretty simple. Free cash flow is going to be the operating cash flow minus capital expenditures. And to put it even more simply, it's basically all the cash that enters a company minus all the cash that leaves a company over a certain period of time. And there's five different things that a company can do with their free cash flow. One, they can reinvest it back into the business. Two, they can pay down debt. Three, they can attempt mergers and acquisitions. And then four or five are how they reward shareholders. They can either buy back shares or pay out dividends. So understanding how much free cash flow a company is generating also helps us understand how they can reward us as a shareholder. So for me, as a dividend growth investor, one of the things that I always say, if you want your portfolio to be a dividend growth machine, then the holdings in your portfolio have to be free cash flow growth machines. And it's also important to remember that over the long term, a company's share price will increase if the company is increasing their free cash flow. So it's pretty easy to see why free cash flow is so important. So let's go over this entire spreadsheet, what's its capabilities and how it works and what's its telling us. So to start off, we can see there's only two variables we have to plug in right here. We can plug in the stock ticker and what its latest full year of data is. So let's go ahead and start with a company like Visa. We'll come up here and plug in V and their last full year of data was 2024. So I'll plug that in here. And now that I plug this in, you can see all this data is going to automatically load in. So we can see right here, for example, we have the name of the company, Visa, and its current share price. And then everything else is going to be related back to the free cash flow for the company. So just to start off, let's see what's listed over here. We have pretty much all the data we're going to be using with the exception of what's on this chart right here. So we have free cash flow listed from 2024 to 2014. Now, if I were to change the latest year right here to 2023, then these years listed here would change as well. Go from 2023 to 2013 in that case. So technically speaking, you can see different data ranges if that's something you wanted to do. For example, if I plugged in 2020, then it showed 2020 to 202010. So keep that in mind. If you want to go back further, you can easily do that just by changing the latest year. Now, obviously what we can see first here, we have free cash flow listed and then we have free cash flow on a per share basis. And I think both of these are important and you're gonna see why here in just a little bit when we come over here and look at this chart and the growth rates. Now, right here, we have a valuation metric. We have price to free cash flow, how much we're willing to pay for each dollar of free cash flow. And then we have another valuation metric right here. We have EV to free cash flow. Then if we come over here, this is technically another valuation metric, free cash flow yield. We'll touch on this more in a little bit. And then we have profitability metrics, free cash flow margin and free cash flow conversion. And one of the things that's not listed up here is going to be what I would call some sustainability ratios. These are pretty straightforward. And again, we'll touch on all this here in just a moment. So we have our general data set right here to give us most of the metrics that we're looking at. So let's go ahead and start with the free cash flow and free cash flow per share. We're talking about the growth. Obviously, we want to see growth in both of these. And right now, charted out, we're looking at free cash flow per share. One of the cool things about this spreadsheet is we can actually change what we want to see. Say we want to look at free cash flow instead of it on a per share basis. We can just click right here and adjust this to free cash flow. And what you can see is this chart is going to automatically update. So now we have just pure free cash flow, not on a per share basis. Now, what's the difference? Why is there a difference in free cash flow and free cash flow per share? Well, one of the things we have to remember is with the free cash flow, the company can buy back shares. And what this can do is it can help inorganically grow the company on a free cash flow per share basis. So look at this. For example, over the past 10 years, Visa has grown free cash flow at a compounded annual growth rate of 10.88%. But if we look at it on a per share basis, it's 15.84%. That's a massive difference in the growth in free cash flow on a per share basis versus just pure free cash flow. Again, this goes back to the fact that the company has been rapidly buying back shares over the past decade. And we can see the same is true with the five year and three year, 9.2 versus close to 16. We have around 8.8 .8 versus 19.1% free cash flow CAGR in the past three years. So you can see, again, there's a massive difference between these. So overall, this area is just to see that a company is growing their free cash flow. How's it done over different time periods? This can give you pretty good insight into what type of stock you're seeing. Typically, obviously for a company like Visa, we're going to want to see pretty solid free cash flow growth. And they've been able to deliver exactly that over the past three, five and 10 years. That's pretty clear. And of course, if you want to see it charted out or how much they're making each quarter, you can easily see that select free cash flow or free cash flow per share. So again, this is pretty nifty over here. Now let's talk about the valuation metrics for a second. We have three of them here. We have free cash flow yield, 
price to free cash flow ratio, and then EV to free cash flow. Let's start out talking about free cash flow yield. What is free cash flow yield? Well, free cash flow yield is simply going to be the company's free cash flow divided by its market cap. And you can see what we're doing is we're looking at it for the trailing 12 months. So if we come over here and look at ticker data, we can see we're plugging in the stock ticker here. We're selecting free cash flow yield, and then we're just selecting the time period, which is trailing 12 months. And for the trailing 12 months, it's sitting at 3.09%. Keep in mind, free cash flow yield will be different if you look at it on a per share basis. So what we can do is compare the current free cash flow yield for the company compared to the 10-year average. And the fact that the free cash flow yield 10-year average is a little bit higher than what it's trading at right now means that you could argue that Visa is currently trading at a slight premium compared to how the company has historically traded. Now, in certain circumstances, you could argue that a company over time can deserve a higher premium. Therefore, it's not technically overvalued. Now, this video is not about valuation, but that is just something I want you to keep in mind. So again, Compare free cash flow yield compared to where it is right now. A lower free cash flow yield means you have to pay more for each dollar free cash flow that you're getting as an investor when you buy shares. Now, our next valuation metric is going to be the price to free cash flow ratio. We can see as of right now for the trailing 12 months, again, you can see right here, trailing 12 months, sitting at 32.4. And the average is actually sitting right at 30. So what we're doing here is you can see we're selecting pretty much everything right here and taking the average. And again, it's sitting at 30. We can see the outliers here. It looks like in 2020, valuation got pretty high, sitting at about 44.07. It looks like, for example, back in 2014, the valuation was actually pretty low, as low as around 20.12. And in 2023, 2022, 2024, the valuation was quite a bit below that 10-year average. And just a little insight, this is actually when I added Visa pretty heavily into my portfolio. It's now my second or third largest position, depending on whether you include the dividend ETF SCHD. But again, what we're seeing here is what is the current share price compared to how much free cash flow the company is producing? And again, what this is telling us, because this is above the 10 year average, this company is trading at a slight premium. And now we're coming over to EV to free cash flow. What is this metric? Well, EV stands for enterprise value. And enterprise value is simply the market cap plus total debt minus cash and cash equivalents. And what this ratio is doing is it's helping us better understand how much you're paying for a company's cash generating ability relative to the enterprise value. Again, enterprise value is market cap plus total debt minus cash and cash equivalents. So basically we look at the 10 year average again right here of this data point right here. It's sitting about 30.6 and right now it's sitting about 32.88 for the trailing 12 months. So again, in this scenario, you'd likely argue, looks like Visa might be trading at a slight premium compared to how the company has historically traded. So those are the three valuation data points we have right there. It gives you a quick snapshot of how it's trading compared to how it's historically traded. So pretty useful. Now, if we come down here, this is one of my favorite things about the spreadsheet. It's the profitability metrics. And this is definitely something that I have not talked about enough in videos. Come over here, you can see we have free cash flow margin and then we have free cash flow conversion. What are each of these? Well, let's start with free cash flow margin. What is this? Well, free cash flow margin basically tells us how much a cash how much cash a company is generating per dollar in revenue. So free cash flow margin is simply going to be your free cash flow divided by sales. For all the revenue you make, how much is becoming free cash flow? So let's say, for example, Visa makes $100 in revenue. $52 of that would become free cash flow. That's pretty good. Actually, it's really good. So the vast majority of Visa's revenue finds its way straight to the bottom line and becomes free cash flow. Compare this to a retailer, for example, maybe a company like Target. If we come up here and plug in TGT, some of this other data is loading in, but you can already see the free cash flow margin for this company is only 3.55%. That's how it is typically for a lot of retailers, much lower. Now, if we come back up here and plug in Visa. So yes, Visa does have a good free cash flow margin. This is a huge bright spot for the company, but one of the things we can also do with this spreadsheet is compare it to how it has been historically speaking. So if we come over here, we can see the company's free cash flow margin over the past decade. Now, compared to the past three years, 2024, it was a little bit lower than it has been over the past few years. Now, at that point, you'd probably want to do a little further research into the company to try and see why this is. Is that something that'll be the case moving forward or is it a one-time thing? But seeing something like this is a pretty big catch. It's something you want to notice when analyzing companies. Now, if we go back pre-2020, we can see right here, looks like free cash flow margin. There's plenty of years where it's quite a bit lower than 52% as well. So overall, over the past decade, I think we have seen improvements. Now, if we come over to free cash flow conversion, Free cash flow conversion is very similar to free cash flow margin. All this is is going to be free cash flow divided by net earnings. And I think this one's useful for a few different reasons. Again, it tells you 
how much free cash flow are we getting from the earnings of a company? Now, one of the things we have to watch out for is when there is a big difference in the free cash flow and the earnings of a company, it could indicate there's some kind of manipulation going on with the management team when it comes to the earnings of a company. Again, earnings can be pretty easily manipulated by management teams. Now, if you come up here, you can see in some cases, free cash flow conversion is actually going to be above 100%. The company generated more in free cash flow than they did in earnings, and that can be due to various reasons. But generally speaking, Visa is a pretty good example of a company with solid free cash flow conversion. So what this leaves us is going to be our sustainability ratios. We have a capital expenditure cover ratio, dividend paid and capex coverage ratio, and then the cash flow to debt ratio. Let's go ahead and take a quick glance at each of these. Now, the first one we have, capital expenditure coverage ratio coming in at 15.87. What is this telling us? Well, the capital expenditure ratio tells us about a company's ability to finance its capital expenditures using its operating cash flow. So let's talk about an example here. Say a company is generating $1 billion in operating cash flow and $500 million in capital expenditures. That'd give them a capital expenditure ratio of about two. Now we can see in the case of Visa, this is actually sitting at about 15.87. So the operating cash flows of the company can easily pay for all the capital expenditures. This is a very healthy capital expenditure cover ratio. Now, depending on what type of industry you're looking at, this can vary by quite a bit. So if it goes lower, Typically, that's not something you want to see, but again, it really depends on the industry that you're looking at. Some industries are much more capital intensive. Now, if we come over here, we have dividend paid and CapEx coverage ratio. Now, all this is doing is we're taking the CapEx coverage ratio, what we just saw over here, and we're also including the dividends that the company is paying out. So in the scenario, when we combine both of them, it drops all the way down to about 3.64. So again, the cash flows of the company can pretty easily meet the dividend payout obligations and their capital expenditures. That's what we're looking for out of a company. And then finally, we have our cash flow to debt ratio. And what this does is it basically measures a company's ability to repay its total debt. So we're talking about total debt using the cash generated from its operations. So if we had a cash flow to debt ratio of 1.0, what that is telling us is that the company's cash from operations could completely cover their total debt. So if it's above one, then they're generating more cash flow than the total debt. And if it's below one, their debt is going to be a little bit larger than their operating cash flow. So in the case of Visa, they're sitting at 0.96. Overall, looks very good, very healthy. And again, that's going to really depend on the industry or sector that you're looking at. So when you're looking at these companies, it's good that you start to get a better understanding of what type of company they are, how they operate, what industry they operate in, and what's typical for that industry. That's probably the best way to compare them. And keep in mind for each of these metrics right here, if we come up here, you can see using the ticker data function, we're looking at them for the trailing 12 months. If you really wanted to, you could pretty easily see how it's changed over the years for this company. You could just, again, build out a little data set like this. It's pretty simple. But there you go. That is our free cash flow analysis spreadsheet. Again, there's tons of cool insights we can get from this spreadsheet. I'm personally going to be using it quite a bit more, especially because I want to start looking at these profitability metrics quite a bit closer. And again, this entire spreadsheet is powered by ticker data. It allows us to automatically import stock financial straight into our spreadsheet. So like always, if you'd like to be able to automatically download this spreadsheet or any of the other spreadsheets on tickerdata.com, or just get the ability to build your own spreadsheets and automatically import Stock Financial straight into your spreadsheet, just like you see right here, then you can head over to tickerdata.com at the link in the description. So with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.